Mammal Madness. Is it me? <laughs> I really hope it is. Because then we get money, right, babe? Do we? Yeah, we bet on this. Oh. Oh, it wasn't my money, so. Well, I mean, I just put $5. It all goes to the club anyway. Well, most of it. The club. The... Wait, I shouldn't say that out loud. But, yeah. Mm. Anyway, um, we're at lions versus orcas. Things are looking pretty good. Uh, I think the lion, or I think the orca is gonna win if it's smart enough. But lions got a fair shot, I think. Probably. Yeah, they probably have a pretty good shot. Okay. Who do you think is gonna win? Be too uh, I I still feel it's like it's gonna be the orca, but. Because it's so much bigger. <laughs> Unless, like... Well, it has... No, there has to be a water component. Um, and, like, they're also... They're slippery. Um, so, you know, them slickeries. And they eat sea lions, which are, like... I don't know. It's lions of the sea. Um, <laughs> uh, lions of the sea. But, I love like, like these are also like two of my favorite animals. So uh, I'll be upset if orcas lose, but I won't be like oh, man, devastated. This is, this is like five paragraphs. Jeez. Okay. Well, this is gonna be a long read. Well, it's only one. Huh? It's only one. One yeah. like battle. That's true. Okay, I am done snacking. I swear. Okay, here we go. <sighs> In the final battle of 2022 March Mammal Madness, Grandma Orca faces a pride of lioness in Alaska. Other marine mammals interact peacefully with fish-eating resident ecotype orcas. Mink whales and dolls porpoises will swim alongside resident orcas. The porpoises and resident orca calves sometimes play together. Sadly, the Salish Sea was once the primary source of orcas for aquarium... Okay, that's... I'm not here to read about them getting captured by aquariums. Man, what if it's important? Ugh, okay. The Salish Sea was once the primary source of orcas for aquariums. From 1964 to 1976, more than 50 south southern resident killer whales were taken into captivity, sold to oceanariums and marine mammal parks throughout the world. In 1970, a killer whale named Tokati uh, was captured from Penn Cove on Whidbey Island and sold to the Miami Sea Aquarium for over 51 years. She has lived in the smallest kinship uh, with uh, southern resident killer whales. Runs deep through their language and culture. Oh, wait, nope, I skipped words. The smallest orca tank in North America. Oh, crap. She is the last surviving southern resident killer whale in captivity for members of the Lumen Nation whose kinship with the southern resident killer whale runs deep through their language and culture. Tokati captivity is painful. She is a kidnapped relative and they want to bring her home. This Friday, 4 8 tomorrow, you can help. Virtually join former Lumi Nation chairman Jay Lewis, Lumi Fisher Ellie Kinsley, cetacean expert Jeff Foster, and Bonnie Swift for a panel discussing about the campaign to bring Tokati home to Salish waters. Free for youth. So it's expensive. Great. Glad that I read that whole paragraph. Since 1944, 1994's Lion King, decline in prey abundance and habitat reduction has dropped the wild population down fewer than 25,000, less than 50%. Groups like Warrior Watch work to ensure there are local benefits for protecting lions. In 2017, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature announced the expansion of Save Our Species initiative to help connect carnivore conservation efforts and support sustainability coexistence with humans across Africa. In 1972, natural historic classic The Serengeti Lion, a study of predator-prey relations, George B. Scallon described how lions within a pride are able to share large kills. But, confl but conflicts over small prey can get very aggressive. As described in the scene, 
A female catches a gazelle and runs with it across a shallow creek and along the thicket of a 200 meter closely pursued by three lions. She retreats under a bush and growls while facing in the others. They hesitate. Suddenly, a male bounds up, crashes up the bush, and attempts to take the carcass. The female retains her hold on it, and for 15 minutes, growling, pushing, and pulling, the two crouch side by side without eating. Suddenly, the body rips in half, and each obtains a shell. Whoa. Another paragraph. <laughs> The combatants of March Mammal Madness are transported to a randomized habitat of kelp forest. Okay, back at the kelps. Specifically, the protected island aquatic reserve with mixed areas of kelp beds and seagrass and the bird marine mammal rockeries of Protection Island. Two lionesses begin walking along the salty beach while the last lioness lifts her head to smell the breeze and listen. Back on Namibia's skeleton coast, the first record of lions returning to the ocean came Early in 2002, where three lionesses from the Horsha Pride started exploring the coastline and swimming to the islands. Standard 2019. None of the fields noticed the orca. None of the felines. Sorry. None of the felines noticed the orca who patrols the beach by closely following the contour of the shoreline within 15 to 25 feet of the lioness. Magnolus at all. 2022. The lioness begins exploring the intertidal zone and investigating items in the shallow water, standard 2019. From down the beach, the lioness frees and a low frequency growl builds up to a roar. Sabinsky et al, 2017. Just beyond the shallows, a rippling wake signals the immediate acceleration of an orca towards the roar. Uh, the lioness go into their stalking, crouch slowly, move up on the beach logs towards Canem Point, the water moist tip of the island, to a preferred harbor seal. What? Wait, what? Okay, that was a long sentence. The lioness go into their stalking crouch, slowly moving up and over beach logs towards Kenham Point, the westmost tip of the island, to a preferred harbor seal. Poca Vitalina, Hall et al. Miklinus et al. Uh, wait. Whatever. Anyway, the first confined evidence of the lions utilizing marine food items along the skeletal coast came in March 2006 when lionesses from the Horsha Pride were observed feeding on a cape fur seal on the beach. Standard 2019. Oh my god, there's more than five paragraphs. This is still going. Doo -doo -doo -doo. The three lionesses sprint to attack the harbor seal, and simultaneously the orca rushes the beach, running aground. Michelin said all 2022. The beach erupts in predator-induced pandemonium. Some harbor seals flee up the beach and others enter the water. Michelin said all 2022. Or 2020. <laughs> Two lionesses follow seals fleeing up the beach, but the last lioness pursues the seal in the intermediate zone. Orca arches his body and swings his flukes maneuver himself out of the beach deep into the water. McLennis and all 2022. We don't need these. I swear. Because this is a mammal eating big transient orca. Uh, he rejoins his pod to rush. A point. He rejoins his pod to rush push water at the fleeing seal and now swimming. Last lioness into the deep water above the kelp forest. What? He rejoins his pod to rush push water at the fleeing seal, and now swimming last lioness into deep water above the kelp forest. That's not a sentence. Anyway, hmm. transient orca's sister, transient orca's sister and mother coverage converge to feed on the seal, then rising vertically out of the water, spy hopping, and slapping their flukes on the surface in the excrement of the successful hunt. Laclinis et al. 2020. The mammal-eating bigs transient orca male grabs last lioness's back leg and, wrenching her knee, drags her below, playing with his prey. Two lionesses pace. Why is that lion named last lioness? Give it a different name. That just makes this all confusing. Two lionesses pace in the swallows of the intertidal zone, staring at the sea. Contact recruitment roaring for their missing sister. Big's transient orca releases last lioness and lets her swim to the surface, grasping her breath. Gasping her breath. Then Big's transient orca. I'm just gonna call him Biggie. 
then Big East or then Big East services and rush swims adjacent to the lion paddling toward the shore, sending her careening in his wake. Biggie swims back his fluke to thrash toss last lioness like a soccer ball. Ferguson at all 2020. But Grandma Orca collides into transient Orca and bites his flank. Oh, God. Okay. So I guess this isn't even the Orca we're focused on. Sure. Why not? For Protection Island sits For Protection Island sits in the Salish Sea, familiar home of Grandma Orca and her resident pod that are dominant to the transient Orca pod. A whole bunch of southern residents have suddenly surfaced in the middle of the transients as the thrashing Orca fluke up white water. Philanthrope 2021. Transient pods typically avoid resident pods and altercations are extremely rare, but perhaps Grandma Orca is particularly aggressive towards the mammal predator Orcas as a preemptive strike in defense of vulnerable grand calf. Speculation from Ford and Ellis, 1998. Grandma Orca leads a of resident orcas to dive the fleeing transients closer to the beach. Grandma Orca and the target, Grandma Orca on target towards transients surge past swimming last lioness and Grandma Orca slipstreams tumbles the last lioness back under the water into the tangled kelp forest. Fearing the risk of a beach stranding, the big transient orcas breaks west from Protection Island, swimming at high speeds known as porpoising out of the deep waters, out to the deep waters of the Strait Juan de Fuca. God, please. Lord, why? Why is this so hard to read? Okay. Submerged in a twisty kelp. La Lion, the lion struggles to kick free with her wretched leg and manages to extricate herself from the kelp and surfaces with a gasp. Grandma Orca and the resident Orca pod are hot on the flukes of the transient Orcas as both pods leave at full sprint for a mile and a half at 30 miles an hour or better, well beyond the battlefield. Trope 2021 at the Protection Island. Okay, what well, you can guess who just won. At the Protection Island, protective Grandma Orca saved the last lioness, even if incidental, but departing from the field of battle, pursued a possible threat of her pod in the intermediate zone. Last lion limps towards the sisters, broken cub twisted around her body, rushing towards their briefly lost sister. Lioness re reunion in the sea surf involves rubbing heads together and licking each other's faces. Pride of the lioness are the 10th annual March Mammal Madness champions. Garbage. Uh, narrated by Katie Hine, Mark Cassell, Mana Dasari, Asia Murphy, and Tara Chestnut. Summarized by Melanie Beasley. Jessica wasn't involved. That's why we didn't win. I can't believe it. Yep. Dang. They didn't even actually fight. They just... Why would you do that in the last one? It's fine, boo. Uh, whatever. Okay, well, we didn't win. What a shame. Yeah. We did our best. <laughs> maybe. What do you mean, maybe? I don't know. Oh. Oh my god. Wait, oh, I gotta count out the points now. Yay. Math. Where is my pen? Uh, there it is. Okay. Okay, so we did not win, which means we get no points for the champion. And we also don't get the money. Someone else gets No the money. money. Uh, but we have a total of 23. Oh, great. I, I don't, I, I'm not even going to try to do this in my head. 23 plus 18 plus 15 plus... 16 plus 0. 72 points. Dang. What a shame. Out of 138 max. Dang. I'm pretty sure I got third place overall. In the bracket. Or we got third place overall in the bracket. Hmm. Well, better luck next year, I say. Do you say? Sometimes. When things oh. didn't go well the current year. <laughs> oh. 
Well. That's okay. Um, okay. All right. Well. That's a rock set. That's a rock. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> okay. Oh, I think I'm going to put that on as background noise. Yeah. I mean, that's a good yeah. idea. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to close out the stream. Hope everybody had a good time. That's March Family Madness this year. Hopefully you stayed with me through the whole time. We were so close. That's okay. Can't win them all. Bye, everybody. <laughs>